I've heard a lot of people say that, even after downsizing Z8 files to Z6 resolution, the Nikon Z8 is worse than the Nikon Z6 in terms of high ISO noise performance. Of course, we might expect some differences because the Nikon Z6 and the Nikon Z8 have very different sensors. The Z6 has a 24 megapixel backside illuminated sensor, and the Z8 has a 45.7 megapixel stacked sensor. But how great is the difference, really? First, I gotta say that I really like both cameras and don't much care about the small differences. Both are great sensors, and for real world shooting, I don't think that what I'm about to say matters. But I know some people say that the Z6 performs a bit better than the Z8, so I wanted to do some measurements and really look into the differences. All right, it's pretty easy to make a comparison. I did two types, a visual inspection and a numerical comparison using the UIQ Image Similarity Index using a system I developed in Python. I took a bunch of images with each camera using the same lens and constant lighting on a tripod. I took images from ISO 100 all the way to ISO 25,600. The subject, a Canadian $20 bill, and I focused on the descending 20s, which gives a good measure for information loss based on the limitation of resolving power and fidelity loss based on noise. Of course, to eliminate the resolution difference, I downsized the Nikon Z8 images to the same dimensions as the Nikon Z6 images. In order to use the UIQ algorithm, I compared each successive high ISO shot for each camera to the base ISO shot with the same camera. It would be difficult to come up with a common baseline, so I had to use the camera-specific baseline. But I think we can all agree that at ISO 100, the cameras look very similar, if not identical. Here is a shot from each camera at ISO 100. I really don't think you can say one has better noise performance at ISO 100. Now, let's look at two shots taken at ISO 12800. No noise reduction or sharpening has been applied. You can see that the Z6 shot looks cleaner with less noise. That's even more visible at ISO 25600, which is the maximum native ISO for the Nikon Z8. Here you can see that the Z6 looks cleaner than the Z8. It's not a big difference. So how does the UIQ algorithm rate them? This is the UIQ measurement against the base ISO 100 shot for each camera. If we use the linear scale between ISO 12800 and ISO 25600 of the Z8, it seems that the Z6 at ISO 25600 performs about 0.6 stops better than the Z8, or about three-fifths of a stop. That's pretty significant, but is that really the end of the story? Let's go back to the two shots at ISO 25600. Yes, the Z8 looks more noisy, but it also has more detail. In fact, if you look at the descending sequence of 20s, there's clearly more information in the Z8 shot, even though the noise performance looks worse. This is not just an artifact. I also did a second test with a different lens, the Nikon 50mm f1.4z set at f5.6, again on a tripod. I also took several shots and selected the sharpest, although pretty much every shot was tack sharp. Here are the two best shots from both cameras. You can see that the Z8 is sharper, but not just sharper, it also has more information. And again, both of these shots are downsized to the same resolution, i.e. the resolution of the Nikon Z6. This is expected. Not only are we downscaling from a 45.7 megapixel sensor to 24 megapixels, but more importantly, the Nikon Z6 has an anti-aliasing filter, whereas the Nikon Z8 does not have one. Overall, because of these two factors, the Z8 retains a sharper shot with more information than the Z6. In other words, the Nikon Z6 anti-aliasing filter, by softening the image a little, may also soften the noise compared to a hypothetical camera without an anti-aliasing filter. This is not just theoretical. Because the Nikon Z8 file has more information, it has the potential to have more aggressive noise reduction applied while still retaining image fidelity. Moreover, because the base Z8 file is sharper, it will require less sharpening than a native Z6 file. We must take this into account because in practice, we would like to sharpen both files to give a similar end result. In order to take this into account, I carefully sharpened the Nikon Z6 file using Darktable's very fine-grained sharpening tool, the Diffuse or Sharpen module, to approximately match the Z6 file to the same level of sharpness as an unsharpened Z8 file at ISO 100. I used ISO 100 so I could just focus on the overall look without reference to noise. Now, of course, the Z8 file still contains more information. We can't help that, but we can at least compare the noise of both files once sharpening has been applied. Here is a side-by-side -side of the new test. Now, the Z6 file sharpened to look like the Z8 file. Again, both at ISO 25600. Now, the noise difference is far more subtle. I'm really finding it hard to tell the difference. The Z8 file might be a bit more noisy, but not by much. 
What about the UIQ algorithm for the adjusted Z6 images? It looks like the adjusted Z6 for sharpening still pulls ahead of the Z8, but by a lot less this time. Now, the calculated advantage at 25,600 is about 40% of a stop. Finally, we can do a similar calculation if we compensate for the additional detail in the Z8 file by giving the Z8 a tiny amount of denoising so that the detail in the Z8 file is smudged a little bit to match the detail in the Z6 file. This again would represent the real-world use. Files with more detail can be denoised more aggressively. Now this part was a bit iffy because it was hard to match the right denoising strength to match the detail in the Z6 file. So I erred on the side of caution and gave the Z8 just a tiny bit so that its extra detail would be pulled back. What happens now? With the new adjusted Z8 file, we get some interesting results with the UIQ measurements. Obviously, in this graph, we see that the Nikon Z8 files suffered a bit at low ISO from denoising. But at high ISO, we gained a little bit of performance in the high ISO files, bringing the Z8 closer to Z6-like performance. Now the difference between the two is 20% of a stop, or one-fifth of a stop. So what's the conclusion to all this? Well, the Z8 files are sharper and contain a bit more information than in practice. If we shot side by side with both cameras, we would also have to sharpen the Z6 files a bit more, and we would also denoise the Z8 files slightly more aggressively. After these adjustments, the Nikon Z6 and the Nikon Z8 are very close, and much closer than what a lot of people claim. That being said, when both cameras are equalized for resolution, the Nikon Z6 files do look slightly cleaner at all ISOs, even when we take into account the differences in post-processing of noise reduction and sharpening that would be applied to each file. The difference, I found, was about one-fifth of a stop, which is about the difference between f4 and f4.3. I do think, then, that the differences between the Z6 and the Z8 are overblown, and the f4.3 versus f4 is not really a great gain compared to the extra detail you get from the Z8 throughout its native ISO range. That being said, if you are after the best low-light performance, cameras like the Nikon Z6 and the newer Nikon Z5 II do have this slight advantage and need less post-processing to get cleaner files, which of course is important too. Is any of this relevant in real-world photography? I'd say pretty much no. I was just curious. There are a thousand other, more important reasons to decide between a 24 megapixel and a 45 megapixel camera, or a Z5 II versus a Z8. And all the cameras I talked about today, whether it's a Z5 II or a Z6 or a Z8, are more than enough at ISO 6400 or below, which is the range in which you'll be taking your best shots anyway. So I hope you enjoyed this video on the differences between the Nikon Z6 and the Nikon Z8 in terms of high ISO noise performance. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a like and a subscribe, and I'll see you again next time.